week and arguably one of the biggest political stories of the week was that postponement of the motion of no confidence in Nelson Mandela Bay and Mayor Athol Trollope. To unpack these stories and more, I'm now joined by political analyst Dumisani Tlope. Very good morning to you, Dumisani. Very good. happy Easter to you. Thank you very much for joining well, thank us. Thank you. <laughs> Blessings from Christ. Thank you very much. Yes. Uh, okay, let's start uh, with some of the top stories. We'll start with yesterday, yeah. uh, that uh, vote of no confidence against Athol Trollope being postponed. What is your initial reaction? Well, well, I think moving forward, it presents both political sides of the contestation an opportunity to continue to lobby uh, and to try to mobilize other you know, additional support base. So it works for both. Uh, I, I think if I, I, I understand that some people want to know who lost yesterday. I, I, if by losing they mean that the EFF was not able to get rid of Trollip yesterday, then perhaps that's the case. But I think it, it, the battle is, is, is far from over. And from where I'm sitting, I think the biggest implication of all of this, one is the disturbance of service delivery at Nelson uh, Mandela Bay Metro, but then also it just tells voters that this thing of coalition government don't work. Doesn't so they must just vote one political party to win overwhelmingly and get the job done. Well, Athol, earlier on in that clip was saying that it has just been postponed. Uh, what then do you think we could see coming out of it one, if it does actually take place in the next 14 days? Well, I think there are two, two things to look into. One is, as I said, is this continuous lobbying and mobilization of other people from both sides of the camp to vote you know, mm. either with the EFF coalition or, or, or the DA coalition. But the second thing, which I think it might work for the EFF, they, they're just convincing the political spectrum that you don't need the biggest numbers possible. But if your strategy is clear and you are willing to go through it and then implement it, you can seriously cause havoc within the political spectrum. You know, spectrum. Mm -hmm. So perhaps this will bring you know, a different interpretation of, of politics. But finally, on that note, I think it also gives us a sense that perhaps in 2019, the biggest you know, political contestation might be between number two and three. Yeah. Uh, let's move on now to the Free State, of course, the outgoing mm -hmm. uh, Premier, the Ace Magoshule. And, uh, you know, in the past couple of weeks has been rocked by a lot of scandals uh, yeah. just as he is set to depart. Uh, this week alone also they're said to have thrown him a party worth mm. 20 million rand. Let's talk about uh, the legacy that uh, Ace Magashule leaves behind. Well, I, I think we need to be careful for two reasons. These things that are being written about about Ace Magashule in the media, they are not necessarily new but they become valuable to the extent that there's a new political leadership in the ANC uh, and there has, there's a significant interest that will not like to see Ace to be where he is. So that's the big context. It does not mean that he has not necessarily in the process messed up himself. So here's an example. If you check this party, this farewell party that you know the media is so on about the 20 million rand the 20 party. million is it, it was actually two things one it was said to be inauguration of the new uh, uh, premier mm -hmm. which we hardly hear about the the, the thing about it being this a farewell party it was just one little in the last part of that communique but then because there's this political contestation in some sources or another that says Ace Mahashule should not be where he is. The concentration is on the farewell element, and yet there was equally a celebration of the new premier. It doesn't mean that his money well spent, but it means that some of these coverages are, are in themselves politically motivated. Uh, briefly, let's talk about uh, land grabs. Uh, of course, also media reports in the past couple of weeks, a land grab specifically here in Johannesburg. Yeah. Let's have a look at uh, the reports coming through that political opposition parties are actually behind the land uh, grab invasions. So I, I'm not sure if I can call it land grab or invasions. How so? Because the people that are involved are on a survival mode. These are people, these are poor people, these are people that are homeless, these are people that have no shelter, these are people that have relatively no sense of income and all of that. So for them, if they recognize a piece of land that can add value to their livelihood, 
they are more than likely to occupy that land. Mm -hmm. Now, once you begin to call them land grabbers and invaders, you, 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 you dehumanize them, you decriminalize their poverty stricken status. So it doesn't help to sort out the problem that they are going through because the terminology criminalizes them. So, so it, 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 it's, uh, and keep, for me, the land question is just a continuation of the struggle that people have waged over the years. Definitely. Well, uh, we were just discussing that in just a bit. Uh, and also seeing on social media that uh, President Cyril Ramaphosa was actually on a flight to Durban this morning, flying um, a economy class uh, uh, airplane there. These are the live visuals. He has, in fact, landed and he is now in uh, KZN, just outside a uh, location, just close to Ebangeni in KZN. He is said to address the church service this morning. This is a part of his Easter plans. Uh, that he'll be uh, commencing throughout the course of the weekend. And then later, he's also expected to go to Limpopo to the ZCC and spend uh, some part of his Easter weekend there. Well, these are just uh, some of the live visuals as uh, our cameraman uh, uh, tries to uh, take us through uh, what we can expect there in uh, Durban. But earlier, we also reported that uh, the president will be spending, of course, uh, his Good Friday in Moria, as I said earlier, it has not emerged that he is attending a uh, service in Esikwabwini. Of course, that is uh, where he is, in fact, uh, now. And we are seeing uh, those visuals there. It is his first visit to the province since he became president. Ramaphosa is uh, scheduled to, of course, uh, travel to the Zion Christian Church service. And that will take place on uh, Sunday. Well, uh, yeah, we've just shown you those uh, live visuals there. And we also have uh, our reporter on the ground.